This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Back in July, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte called a snap parliamentary election and announced that he would retire from politics. Having been Prime Minister for more than a decade, his imminent retirement has significantly opened up the race and the current political landscape reflects this upheaval. With less than three months until the election, a brand new party founded just weeks ago now leads in the polls, and a merger between two left-of-centre parties is jostling with the ruling centre-right party for second place. Meanwhile, the Farmers' Protest Party, that shocked the country to win the provincial elections in March, has seen its support more than half. So what on earth is going on in Dutch politics? We'll explore that in this video as we take a look at some of the potential election winners. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. For some brief context, the Netherlands is holding an election on the 22nd of November, after Mark Rutte's government collapsed amid an internal dispute over refugee policy. Rutte has decided to retire from politics, so one thing we know for sure is that his 13 years as Prime Minister is coming to an end. So who's leading the current polls? Well, the race was shaken up in August when popular politician Peter Omzicht announced the creation of a new party, called New Social Contract. Omzicht had been a member of parliament for the centre-right Christian Democratic Appeal, or CDA, until 2021, when he left the party and became an independent. He's perhaps best known for his key role in exposing the child benefit scandal that brought down Mark Rutte's third cabinet in 2021, in which it emerged that thousands of families had wrongly been accused and punished for child benefit fraud. That backstory has helped make him something of an anti-establishment, pro-democracy and rule of law type candidate. Politico's poll of polls has new social contract in first place on 20%, and individual polls have suggested it could win around 30 seats, making it the largest party in the 150-seat parliament. A lot of Omzicht's platform is based on his book, A New Social Contract, that was published in 2021. At the centre of his movement is good governance and security of existence. He's calling for a major renovation of the country's administrative system with proposals like establishing a constitutional court, reforming the electoral system to improve the bond between elected officials and voters, strengthening social security, reforming the civil service to improve transparency and integrity, and more. But the interesting thing is, despite polling ahead of the other parties, Peter Omzicht won't become prime minister. Because he doesn't want to be. He says he's cautious of the party growing too quickly and would prefer to remain in Parliament than become Prime Minister. So it raises the prospect of new social contract joining a coalition rather than leading one, even if they win the election. Much of new social contract's current support in the polls has come at the expense of centre and centre-right parties like D66, Omzicht's former party, the CDA, and the ruling VVD. D66 and CDA, by the way, have formed part of Mark Rutte's last two coalitions. Omzik's generally conservative views on immigration and Europe, combined with his desire to strengthen social security, has helped make his party attractive to a broad section of the political spectrum. The big question is whether new social contract will maintain its position in the polls, or will it suffer the same outcome as previous upstart Dutch parties who've seen their support fall as time goes on. So that's Peter Omzicht and New Social Contract, but who else is competitive in the upcoming election? In second place, with 17% according to current polling, and just a few points behind the leader, is the Green Left Labour Party Joint List, which is a centre-left electoral alliance consisting of, unsurprisingly, Green Left and the Labour Party. Cooperation between the two parties has been growing for some time, and they agreed to combine forces for the upcoming national election after the fall of the government in July. This merger has boosted the hopes of the Dutch centre-left, which has faced electoral difficulty in recent years. And there's a real possibility that the Netherlands could get its first left-of-centre prime minister since Wim Kok left office in 2002. 
The Green Left Labour Alliance's lead candidate for Prime Minister is former Dutch Foreign Minister Frans Timmermans, who is moving back into domestic politics after nearly a decade in Brussels, where he most recently served as the EU's climate chief. In this role, he bolstered his green credentials, including through the landmark European Green Deal, but also drew the ire of many Dutch and European right-wing parties who oppose the measures that he's championed. Moving on, just one point behind Green Left Labour is the People's Party for Freedom and Democracy, better known as the VVD. This is the party formerly led by Mark Rutte that's led all coalitions since 2010. Rutte has been replaced as party leader by Dilan Yishigo Zigerius, a Turkish-born Dutch politician who has served as justice minister since the beginning of 2022. She's been described as coming from the right of the party, and the upcoming election will be the VVD's first test of whether its electoral fortune can survive in the post-Rutte era. There are two other parties worth mentioning here. First is the Farmer Citizen Movement, or BBB, who just months ago were polling way out in the lead and even won the provincial elections and subsequent Senate elections earlier this year, having grown off the back of the Dutch farmers' anger at government measures to cut livestock numbers and reduce nitrogen-based emissions in the agricultural sector. However, they've dropped down to a fairly distant fourth on around 10% for a number of reasons. Not least because national elections generally aren't won on single issues, and their main issue has fallen back somewhat, as the salience of other areas like housing, immigration and healthcare. But even if BBB don't win as many seats as they were once projected, they could still likely win enough to make them an important player in coalition negotiations. Also on 10% in the polls is the far-right Party for Freedom, or PVV, led by Gert Wilders, which has risen somewhat over the course of the year, but faces losing votes to the likes of the ruling VVD as it shifts right and also to new social contract. Realistically, the PVV's only hope of being part of any coalition would be if the ruling VVD wins again and needs their support, as the likes of New Social Contract, Green Left Labour and other smaller parties have ruled out working with Wilders and his PVV. The VVD's new leader, however, has not ruled this out. So, to wrap things up, a few things are clear. Rutter's retreats from politics is part of a dramatic shift in the Dutch political landscape. A brand new party is polling out ahead, with a new-ish centre-left force and the ruling party under new leadership not too far behind. And regardless of who comes out on top though, Dutch coalition talks traditionally take a while, so even after the election, we may be left waiting a long time to see exactly what the next government actually looks like. Following stories and doing independent journalism often requires a fair bit of travel, from attending the NATO summit in Lithuania or Munich Security Conference, to exploring Aldi across Germany, or being forced to hang out with fellow Nebula creators. It's alright for some people. What is consistently annoying though is the technology. When you need to work from abroad or even just access the services you're used to, it's often way harder than you'd like, requiring endless verification, validation and authentications. As I'm sure you already know, that's when NordVPN comes into play, helping you connect to the internet wherever you are. Whether that's connecting back at home so your work account doesn't freak out, or connecting to another country from the comfort of your living room to get discounts on your next trip. That's right, very often other countries get cheaper prices for flights, with research finding US consumers pay up to three times more. NordVPN are actually currently running a major back-to-school promotion, which means that when you sign up for a two-year plan, you not only get a massive discount, but you also get an extra four months. That's a huge discount if you click our link. Plus, Nord will keep sponsoring TLDR if people click it. We've been told that sometimes when people hear us talk about NordVPN, they open up a tab, start searching, but they don't click our link. I'm certainly glad that they get the service, but you only get the discount and you only support the channel through that link. So if you're trying to improve our journalism by signing up for Nord, use our link when you do, and you'll get their great service at a discount.